to Mr. Trump. He's had a busy morning sounding off, tweeting about the NFL and ESPN and little Bob Corker. Here's his quote, or his tweet rather. Quote, the failing New York Times set little Bob Corker up by recording his conversation was made to sound a fool, and that's what I am dealing with. Yes, the president did spell little with two Ds. And in a new interview with Forbes magazine, the president responded to Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, allegedly calling him a moron. This is what Mr. Trump said about that. Quote, I think it's fake news, but if he did that, I guess we'll have to compare IQ tests, and I can tell you who's going to win. Ben Kissel is a political commentator and talk radio host, and Harlan Hill is a Democrat who voted for Mr. Trump. Welcome to both of you. Thanks. Thank you. So, so, here, thanks for being here. So, Harlan, when you put all of that together, it sounds, well, it sounds like a reality show. But the bottom line is, how is this helping America? Well, I mean, ultimately, I didn't think that uh, the senator's comments were very helpful. I think that they were a total distraction. Um, th this is a senator that's really never been a, a fan of the president. Uh, he reluctantly supported him uh, as a fair weather uh, supporter no, of the president. He was, a, he was but, a big supporter of the president. Wait, Bob Corker did oh, support oh, the president. Oh, 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 I mean, look, in the most trying times of the campaign, when things got really tough, Bob Corker wasn't there. He wasn't like he wasn't like people like me that stayed loyal to the president even when uh, things didn't look rosy. The excess Hollywood tape so. came out. Is that what you're talking about? There, there, are, there are there are a whole series of incidents where Bob Corker turned on the president uh, before the election, and then we know we know. Give that me he specifics went and because this is new to me. Give me give me specifics when Bob Corker didn't support the president during the election or after. Yeah, well, I mean. It, Access Hollywood is, is an important example where, mm -hmm. you know, when, when times got tough, you know, he went running. So, uh, it, but look, there, there, there are plenty of, of, of people that are in Corker's shoes. Unfortunately, this is reality in Washington where the Republican establishment is totally unwilling uh, to support the president when it means that he's fundamentally reforming the Republican Party. They would rather see President Trump fail mm -hmm. than to provide relief to the American middle class. Uh, through tax reform, Obamacare, repeal and replacement, et cetera. Uh, okay, they're playing so, so political ben, games. Ben, what Harlan, ben, what Harlan yeah. is saying certainly reflects what Steve Bannon is saying, a former advisor with the president. He's with Breitbart News now. Yes. He's actually calling for Bob Corker to resign. Let's listen. McConnell and Corker and the entire clique establishment globalist clique on Capitol Hill have to go. And if he needs any, if he, we need any more proof about what they think, you heard it tonight, it's an absolute disgrace. If Bob Corker has any honor, any decency, he should resign immediately. Okay, so, so Ben, right. there it is. And, and, and we all know what well, Bob Corker said by now, that the yeah, White House is, go ahead, Ben. At the end of the day, the one character trait that Donald Trump absolutely loves is blind allegiance to Donald Trump. Bob Corker is an adult. He's a senator, has been for years. Uh, he deserves the right to have an opinion. And quite frankly, Donald Trump's Twitter storms are leading to a lot of uh, nervous tension within the GOP. So when, when Corker talks about Donald Trump uh, possibly starting World War III via Twitter, uh, it is a reality show, President. No. But it, unlike reality shows, the, when the credits roll, it could be a list of people who are deceased because of the decisions made by this man who is more desperate for ratings than he is for passing health care, passing tax reform, and helping out the middle class and the folks in the rural areas that he said he professed, that he professed to love so much. And if you look at the approval opinion and the approval ratings across the country, they are down for Donald Trump because the American no. people are sick and tired no. him with, of him playing petty politics with their lives and their finances. Well, and he Harlan, needs to grow Harlan, up, just, and I think Corker made a good point. Just, just to put this in more um, coldly logical terms, um, Mr. Trump does need these Republicans in Congress to pass his tax reform plan. He has supposedly uh -huh. has this new economic plan he's going to roll out. He told that to Forbes magazine. He needs Republicans to help him with that. And if you alienate a powerful senator like Bob Corker and continue on with this feud, don't you kind of throw a wrench in your own efforts to get something done to help the American people? Absolutely, no, and I mean, that's why his approval ratings are going down because well, the American people are getting sick of the, uh, let, of the Bethany I'll Frank or the White House. I'll let take that one, Ben. My turn, ben. Yeah. <laughs> My turn. So, uh, uh, you know, ultimately, Bob Corker has not been there during some critical votes on Obamacare. They were going to do a clean repeal. He wasn't there along with five other Republican uh, senators. Um, so this is something 
that we've seen before establishment Republicans, uh, you know, say that they want to work with the president, but people like the senator are unwilling to when push comes to shove. And so the president's done say, he's, he's done saying that he'll be a nice guy. He's done saying, I'm going to let Senator McConnell handle this. And, you know, so the, 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 the basis of your question is that he needs Republicans to come to the table to pass legislation. But so far, Republicans in Congress have proven to be totally inept at passing anything, at anything. So, so why does he so, need to so, so, so the president's Congress gonna be on an island? So what's the president gonna do? He still needs to oh, negotiate with them to get his legislation oh. through. He said a clear say, He's gonna work with Democrats if, if he has to. If Congress is so inept, why does Donald Trump consistently put things on their plate that he that, that they must pass, such as the Iran deal or DACA? Uh, it, just, it just seems to me as if we are living in a time where total gridlock has taken over Washington still, and at the end of the day, the, the <laughs> swamp is not being drained, and people are not getting the policies passed that are going to help them uh, in their middle class, uh, in the middle class. Okay, I, and I want to get to one more thing. I want to end this conversation to get to one more thing, because I do think it's important. I want to talk about Harvey Weinstein. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama still haven't come out and condemned um, these, all of these alleged incidents of sexual harassment by Harvey Weinstein. Ben, why do you think that is? Well, if you look at the economic ties between Hollywood uh, and the Clintons and the DNC, they're very real. Uh, and I think this does put the DNC in a precarious position. Politicians like Hillary Clinton, uh, Barack Obama in a precarious position. Why, they don't why necessarily are they coming out and condemning him, especially Hillary Clinton? Well, I absolutely think that they should, and I think that Hillary Clinton should as well. And I think that uh, Hillary Clinton has more than enough opportunity with her book tour. Uh, you know, if you look at what she did in, in the 2016 campaign, making the Democratic Party the party of the wealthy, winning the mm -hmm. majority of the wealthiest districts all across the country, uh, I think that she is just scared. Of, of losing the support that she had uh, in 2016. Perhaps she still has political she ambitions. For anything. We just don't, I don't know. Get it. I don't get I, it. I Harlan, agree. Do Come you? out against him. It's very easy, in my opinion. Harlan? Yeah. With, with, with Democrats, it's do as I say, not as I do. And they got caught with their pants down with Harvey Weinstein taking enormous sums of money, uh, headlining events with him, taking uh, awards. Uh, you know, from g at galas that were handed out by him. Um, so, you know, uh, they don't like that this has been turned back around on them. And uh, but I, ultimately, I think that the Democrats response to this has been appropriate and that they're distancing themselves from him. It's just too little too late, because unfortunately, Harvey Weinstein was one of the worst kept secrets in Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, as we saw with a story that was suppressed in the New York Times from 2004, uh, right. they had the media had ample opportunity to report this story long ago. All right, and I have to leave it there. Thanks, you, thanks to you both, Ben Kissel and Harlan Hill. Thank you so much.